Welcome to Circuit Secrets. In today's video, we will be learning how to get some debug information for FreeRTOS on the Raspberry Pi Pico programmed in the Arduino IDE. This video expands on the information in the previous two videos and focuses on debug information. If you are new to FreeRTOS and multi-core programming, I recommend starting with those videos. If you have not set up Arduino for programming the Raspberry Pi Pico and Pico W, I suggest you check out my video on that. If you find this content useful and want to catch my videos as soon as they are uploaded, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. Into the code. For this example, I will be starting with the code from the last video, Raspberry Pi Pico, FreeRTOS, and Multicore Programming. So I will focus on the changes to the code. First in setup, we call Serial Begin. This is because our debug information will be sent to the serial port. In the loop function, I call the task debug info function. I wrote this function to encapsulate a wide range of debug information and keep its code condensed to one function so you can easily copy and paste it into your own projects. Speaking of projects, there are source files for this series available on my website, circuitsecrets.com. There is no sign up or anything. Just go to the site and grab the files you want. They should be towards the bottom of the page. Into the task debug function. This function starts by creating a variable of type integer and setting it equal to the return value of the function UX task get number of tasks. This is a task utility and part of FreeRTOS. It simply returns the number of tasks currently being managed by FreeRTOS. Next, we create a pointer to an array called PX task status array. This pointer is of the structure type task status T, which is again part of the task utilities for FreeRTOS. We set its size to equal the number of tasks. The structure array will hold all of the current information about the tasks. If you are unfamiliar with structures and arrays and want me to make a video explaining more complex data types, leave a comment and let me know. Next, we create an unsigned long integer called runtime. Now we pass number of tasks the return value from the function UX task get system state. We pass UX task get system state the pointer to the task status array the number of tasks, and the address of our unsigned long runtime. UX task get system state is a task utility of FreeRTOS that populates the array of structures we passed it with the task information, and will also populate the runtime variable with the total cycles since the Raspberry Pi started. The value returned by UX task get system state is equal to the number of task status structures populated by the function. This should be equal to the value passed into the function as the number of tasks. But if something goes wrong and the function cannot populate the array, it will return a zero. UX task get system state can be thought of as creating a snapshot to the current state of all the tasks running on the processor. So now we should have all the data about the tasks we need to start seeing what FreeRTOS is doing with the tasks. In the next line, we use a serial print function to output to the serial port the number of tasks. Now we start a for loop that will cycle through our task status array. In the next serial print function, we print the task name stored in the status array. We select the current element of the array by using our for loops increment counter. Now we create an integer called current state to hold the value that represents the current state of the task. There are five states possible, running, ready, blocked, suspended, and deleted. We pass the current state variable to a switch statement that contains cases to handle any of the five states. When the value matches a case statement, the state represented is printed with the serial print function. There are more elegant ways to do this, but I thought this format would be the easiest to understand. This information can help you determine if you need to change the priority of a given task. The timing of the USB port and other tasks may cause tasks to appear blocked when they are in fact running, so calling this function from a specific task can be much more beneficial for seeing exactly where blockage is happening and what task goes next. After the switch statement, we use the serial print function to output the current task priority stored in the task array. The task priority determines what task goes next. A high priority task can block the execution of lower priority tasks. If something is not executing or not executing frequently enough, the task state priority is important to look at to adjust the priority levels of these tasks. Next, we use the serial print function to output the stack high watermark. This is used to see the available stack for the process when the process has used the most stack. 
Say a task normally has 100 free, but at some point it reaches 30. The reported value will be 30. This information can be used to adjust the stack size for a task. Too large of a task wastes resources. Too small and an overflow can occur. Next, we use the serial print function to output the runtime counter for the task. This tells you how much time each task is spending on the processor. Again, this can be very useful data for tuning your free RTOS based program. Finally, we delete the task structure array to make room for the next time the debug function is called. Use this code any way you want and consider it open source. Here is the resulting debug information. In the next video, we will do a deep dive into some utilities for FreeRTOS and see how our program responds to them. To get a copy of the source files, just drop by circuitsecrets.com. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Leave a comment to let me know what you would like to see in future videos.